Have you ever thought about the connection between art and... Well then, buckle up. Join me and your personal team of Smithsonian experts as we reframe American art. Today, let's take a look at one of the paintings in the museum's 19th century landscape collection. Completed in 1865, Frederick Church's Aurora Borealis depicts an 1860 Arctic expedition led by Dr. Isaac Hayes. No, not that Isaac Hayes. According to the exhibition label, Dr. Isaac Israel Hayes, the explorer, and Frederick Church, the artist, ran in the same circles in New York in the 1850s. The boat in the foreground is the SS United States, which was on a mission in search of the Northwest Passage. The title, Aurora Borealis, refers to the northern lights, the eerie, colorful ribbons of light that blanket the top half of the painting. Obviously, I've heard of the Aurora Borealis before, but I wonder what exactly the Northern Lights are and how they're formed. So, I'm heading down the road to Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum to talk with David Dvorkin, the senior curator for the history of astronomy. We're here in the Einstein Planetarium because I'm curious, David, what is the Aurora Borealis? Uh, they are, in a way, uh, a manifestation of what we now call space weather. Space weather. Yeah, have you ever walked down the street and you know you look into a restaurant and there's this red sign that goes O P E N. Sure. Blink, blink. Okay. Well, what's causing that glow is the same kind of process that's causing the atmosphere to glow. So the aurora is like a neon sign. It, yeah, yeah. But it's not neon. Yeah, it's oxygen. Hmm. And when the sun burps, oh, you might say uh, there's a little solar flare or okay. something, a little explosion, which happens to be ten times the size of the Earth, but on the sun scale, it's you know, nothing. The atmosphere is reacting to very high energy particles coming from the sun, streaming from the sun. I mean, sometimes a stream is stronger, sometimes it's weaker, okay. and what you get are these different shapes, shimmering and, and glowing. So is that why when we see the aurora, we can sometimes see different colors? You get those different colors. It's a function of where did the collision take place, where did the absorption take place, where did the emission take place, and what element is involved. Okay, so now I know what the Aurora Borealis is, but I wonder how much Frederick Church knew about it in the 1860s. If anyone can help me, it's Eleanor Harvey. She's a SAM curator extraordinaire who specializes in 19th century landscape painting, and she's even written about Church in her most recent book. What's on your mind? Well, I've heard that Church was friends with Isaac Hayes and other explorers, so I'm wondering, was Church a science nerd? He was a science nerd. For Church, learning about science was part of being an artist. In 1859, there was an amazing aurora that Church saw from his studio in New York City. Wow, that and far that, south. That far south. Actually, this was an aurora that was visible as far south as Cuba. It was in all of the papers and the scientific journals. The, what did regular non-scientist people think was going mm -hmm. on. They thought the world was ending, <laughs> um, quite seriously. <laughs> um, although auroras are weird. The auroras were one of those sort of things that were deeply unsettling. They mm. could be an omen, and particularly during the Civil War years when the aurora borealis was painted. Huh. So it really did depend on your point of view. So what do you think the auroras are? Do they represent something then? I think they're working on a couple of different levels okay. in this painting, um, and that's typical of artists. It is first and foremost a picture of an Arctic rescue expedition. Right, right. But it's also playing into that trauma about the Civil War. It's not 100% clear that the Union is going to win. We don't really know how this is going to turn out. Hmm. Well, it's one of the things that makes American art, it makes all art fun, but American art in particular, is you can tie it back to the people, the place, the current events, and so when you see something interesting going on in a painting, the first thing you should be asking is, wait a second, what was going on at this time right, period right. that makes this make sense? Okay, so this is all coming together. Thanks to overactive solar burps, the aurora borealis would have been visible not only in the Arctic North, where the Hayes expedition took place, but so far south that Frederick Church would have been able to see them from his New York studio. But Church isn't just documenting nature in this work. He's using the aurora as a symbol of the chaos and uncertainty gripping America during the Civil War. 
the Northern Lights are both a fascinating scientific phenomenon and an expression of the fear and anxiety of Church's time. Bye, Art Nerds!